Hey guys, my name is Mark, and in this video I'm going to show you how I edit and restore 42-year-old slide film captured with my digital camera using this technique. It's not only fun, but the emotional impact sharing these with friends and family will have is rewarding, especially given everything going on right now. Now these are some of my edited images. They've come a long way in the edit versus their originally captured looks. Because I'm essentially taking a picture of a picture, I want to retain as much photo information as I can for editing. It's for that reason I'm shooting raw. Now before I begin, I'll just say that photo editing is highly subjective. Everybody interprets color and composition a little differently, so to each their own. Now my goal here is to best replicate the way the image looks as seen through the projector slide. And once the image is normalized, you can go a little nuts with further adjustments that fit your style. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to import the slides I want to edit. You'll notice these images are a little underexposed. And I did that intentionally because I want to be able to retain the highlights in the sky when working with the image. Before I dive into the edit, I'm going to remove the edges of the slide here with the Crop Overlay tool, or R, on your keyboard. Little trick here, if you hit O while in this mode, you can cycle through various grid overlays that can help you with your photo composition. Once the image is cropped, the edit can begin. And the next thing I want to do is to get this image properly exposed. You can do this manually, or you can use Autotone, which does a pretty good job and might save you some time. Now, to do that, simply go over here to this box and click Auto. And the program will auto-adjust these levels here, giving you a good place to start. You can, of course, further manipulate these levels to your liking. Throughout the process of editing, you can hit the backslash key to revert back to your unedited file so you can monitor your progress. Also, if you feel you've gone too far in one setting, you can just double click the selection and it will reset it back to zero. Now, based on these settings, I'm pretty happy with the white balance of the image, so I'm going to leave that alone. But you can see how adjusting it will impact the image. The biggest thing that struck me with the slide is the blues. They're easily the dominant color in this image, so I'm going to adjust those levels in the HSL color tab to try to match what I saw in the slide. Now, one thing about this image is Lake Louise here isn't quite as striking as it should be in this photo. And I'm going to help it out a bit using the radial filter. Now, selecting it, I'm going to draw a little oval shape around the lake itself. Then, on this custom tab, I'm going to select saturation. Now, I want this selection itself to be the focus, so I'm going to need to invert it by checking this invert box. Once that's done, I'm going to try to mimic the color of Lake Louise to really help make it pop. Now, I'll do this by adjusting the saturation levels as well as the white balance levels to dial in that aqua blue color. For after. Split toning is just that, toning that is applied to different areas based on luminance values. This allows you to add one color at a certain saturation level to the highlights and another at a different saturation level to the shadows. It's helpful to use two colors that are complementary. There's a whole tutorial in this section alone, but I don't want to get into that right now. It's a very powerful tool that can have a pretty big impact on your image, given that these are photographs of slides. I'm going to keep it subtle, but you can see the impact it has on the image. Okay, I'm actually feeling pretty good about this edit. It's come a long way since we first started. Now, the next thing I want to do is take care of these little imperfections, the dust, small bits of hair, and scratches on the slide. And to do this, we're going to open the file up in Photoshop. Command-E will open the file directly from Lightroom. From here, it's really easy, thanks to the Spot Healing Brush Tool, or J on the keyboard. 
Once selected, simply paint over the affected areas, and the program will quickly study the pixels of the area and effortlessly remove it from the image. You can quickly adjust the brush size by using the bracket buttons. Now, as easy as this is, it's important not to go too fast. If the area you are painting is fairly uniform, it works well, but it's not perfect. I would recommend going slowly and using the zoom tool to zero in on your area and just keep tapping the mouse button to make sure it's doing a good job. If you do mess up, it's easy enough to undo and uh, simply adjust your strategy. When you're happy with the result, you can now make your own JPEG and one whose settings and fixes have really brought new life to the image. How far you want to go with this is really up to you, but it's a great way to experiment with your photo editing skills, and more importantly, the emotional impact these could have, sharing them with your friends and family is definitely worth the effort. Hopefully this video was helpful to you guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. I haven't played that in a long, long time. Fresh batteries though, that's all it took. It's in pretty uh, gnarly shape, but it's 1989, that thing. And Tetris still works. Actual room tone.